Welcome back to sportsrevexpert.com. Today we're going to be talking about medial tibial stress syndrome or shin splints on the medial side or inside of your shin. A lot of people get confused between the muscle involved with medial shin splints and lateral shin splints. You can have shin splints on both sides. There's a common muscle that is called the tibialis that is involved with shin splints. But many people get confused and don't understand which tibialis is actually involved with the issue at hand. So there are two tibialis muscles, your tibialis anterior, which sits on the front of the shin, but on the lateral side, this one aids in dorsiflexion or lifting the foot up, but also inversion of the calcaneus. There's a posterior tibialis. This is where posterior tibialis or medial tibial stress syndrome comes into play. This one sits behind the tibia and on the medial side. This is why people will get inside pain that is near their bone of the tibia. Um, this muscle aids in plantar flexion, the opposite of what the tibialis anterior does, but it also inverts the calcaneus. So we have similarities of inverting the calcaneus, and we have differences where tibialis anterior lifts the foot up, tibialis posterior assists in pushing the big toe down. Both of them will help in aid in arch positioning of the foot. So generally speaking, when there's a problem with this tendon, it either doesn't like to do one of two things. It doesn't like to shorten or it doesn't like to lengthen. In either instance, usually there's an overload scenario where you lengthen the tendon too aggressively too often um, or you did the same thing with shortening the tendon too aggressively or too often. In either case, we want to restore the ability to contract the tendon fully or lengthen the tendon fully. So two ways that you can do this in a comfortable manner to start off addressing these symptoms are obviously we need to remove the provocative factors. So we, we need to reduce the stress to a degree that allows us to comfortably um, not have the symptoms worsen the following day when we perform any sort of activity. So that goes with any injury. If you have worse symptoms the following day from an activity, you're probably being too aggressive with that activity where you need to dial down a notch or you need to maybe put a pause on that activity for a period of time. Once we've stopped picking at the scab, the easiest solution to get the tendon comfortable contracting again is through isometrics. So isometrics generally will come in the form of inversion of the ankle. So this is your standard kind of four-way ankle banded movements, but focusing on inverting the foot. Again, this is an action of the tibialis anterior is inverting the foot where you push inward on a band. So just holding that isometrically in a neutral-ish position is the most comfortable way to start. Do this for 20, 30 seconds, holding that in an intensity that you feel comfortable with. Repeat on a daily basis, if not multiple times a day, and then eventually start performing through a full range of motion as that tendon feels comfortable contracting through a full range of motion. Now to get the tendon comfortable lengthening, a lot of people make this mistake and think they need to do dorsiflexion or tibialis raises. And this is a great exercise, but remember the tibialis anterior also inverts the foot too. So if you're everting your foot with the tibialis raises, you're not actually doing the tibialis raise correctly. So a better way to work on lengthening the posterior tibialis tendon is in the closed chain performing pronation. Now pronation is not performed in the manner of which the foot just collapses down and in. A lot of times that's what causes the problems when people to aggressively perform over pronation. The tendon is not ready for the length, the extreme length that you're putting it through. Um, especially when you allow the ankle to collapse. So what you should see when you're in the dorsiflex position is you should see a nice stable foot on the ground where we have equal pressure, big toe, little toe, and heel. And then as you put pressure in your tibia and your knee translates forward over top of the foot, then you would see the arch drop down like a trampoline and then lift back up like a trampoline when you, uh, when you stand back up. So anytime the knee bends, the arch goes down like a trampoline. Anytime the knee straightens, the arch lifts back up like a trampoline would um, when you're jumping up and down on it. Um, all the while you're keeping equal pressure, big toe, little toe, and heel. This is what's going to get you the comfort with lengthening the tendon again. So combine this with the isometrics, you're getting comfortable 
contracting the tendon, then also you're getting comfortable lengthening the tendon in that dorsiflex position through the closed chain. This is the position I found most comfortable for people to work on this, and oftentimes you can add a little bit of multi-directional instability for balance into this too, just to get the tendon a little bit more exposure to some instability and uh, different positions that might be involved through sport. So for this exercise, I like to focus on that cone straight ahead first and foremost to get the concept of the exercise down, but then, but then we can also add a reach to the outside and across the body to add a little bit more challenge to this position um, from an athletic standpoint. All right, hope you found this video useful. Be sure to like, subscribe to the channel, type in the comments below how long you may have been dealing with this issue, what you're trying to get back to, things that you've tried in the past, um, things you found useful. Did you find this video useful? If you'd like my help specifically, you can email me, greg at sportsrehabexpert.com, and we can talk about what it would look like to set up a online consultation and work together on the issue so that you can resolve and get more clarity on how to get back to what it is that you enjoy doing. All right, thanks for watching the video. We'll talk soon.